Okay, hello and welcome to episode three of The Greatest Stories Ever Told with me, Abby Hoskins. And me, Nathan Appleby. Uh, this week we're going to be reviewing King Kong, Peter Jackson's 2005 epic. <laughs> yes. I think we should start with the visual effects in yep. this film. I think, you know, I, they're breathtaking, some of the visual effects. The attention to detail. Yeah, on Kong, the detail really is. like Every single like bit of fur... Yeah. really stands out. They really get some good close-ups because, like you say, the attention to detail is really good. I, I watched the um, special features on the DVD, actually, and then Andy Serkis is, like, motion capturing of Kong. It's so good to see like, how exactly they made it. It's really interesting mm. if you're, like, interested in how they did it. Because it it, it's, like, such a tedious process, but you can really see how it pays off. Yeah, it's nice to know the extent of work and the effort that's gone into the tiniest little things. It's it's amazing. It it, it gobsmacks me really. Yeah, cuz they cuz Kong's actually got emotion. Like it's on a lot yeah. of visual effects stuff like characters don't have emotion, but like what Peter Jackson's done with Gollum as well in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And then advanced into King Kong is by using Andy Serkis and like actually filming the facial expressions it, you care about Kong's character yeah it, it it just gives so much more definition to every little you know you see every pain and every emotion that he goes through and it does allow you to connect with him more you know even though he is just CGI it's yeah. amazing I, I kind of think he's the best character in it <laughs> yeah I, I'd have to agree <laughs> I think yeah the best character yeah like the, the other good visual effects stuff is the dinosaurs. Mm. Yeah, there might be quite a lot of dinosaurs yeah, featured. Yeah, there but... is a lot of dinosaurs, yeah. but they look good. They, they do look, they really, do look good. really good. They do look really good. I cannot fault the visual effects in this no. film. I just think there's nothing to pick up on. Yeah. It's, and it's just great. Like, the digital colour correction they've done on the shots makes them look so beautiful as well, because it's, it's a really well-filmed film, yeah. but the, the digital colour correction on it really adds... Like something, even if it's just like painting a bit cloud in the sky behind them, yeah. it makes it look a lot better, yeah. which I think you need for a long film. There's a lot you need to make a long film good, and this ticks a lot of the boxes. <laughs> yes, it definitely does. There's a lot of good performances, mm. but there's there's no great performances. Yeah, I just think there's any Oscar worthies or anything no. in there. There's there's some good casting choices. Yeah, there's some really good casting but... choices. There's a good sort of one. Jack Black, you wouldn't expect him to play the role. Yeah, it's something completely different to what he does, and it shows his diversity as an actor, being able to pull off the kind of in-your-face comedy kind of stuff, like School of Rock, and then being able to play such a different character. Yeah, because in sort of everything, he plays that School of Rock character, and it's good to see him do something different. Yeah. He's really, like, the standout, memorable yeah piece of this film you after Kong he's the most memorable bit it's really yeah. good to see him hold back I'd have to say Naomi Watts I think she, she does give a good performance I think she just got a little bit repetitive yeah this is not her film. best film no of her the films I've seen of hers Eastern Promises on Mulholland Drive is the best she's so <laughs> good in those films but I know maybe because it's such a long film it's kind of yeah. taken it out of her mm. maybe <laughs> maybe i don't know because but it's not it's not like the character's fault the script is a really well-rounded yeah. you care about her character you you connect to her you do uh, really build that bond with her character and you do really feel for her throughout the film yeah it's it's not the script's fault i don't think it's necessarily her fault either it's it's just not yeah she's good she is good she's ve yeah. she's still good in it she's just she she's done better so, yeah, yeah same I think with, that's the way to compare it, innit? Same with Adrian Brody. He's done better. Yeah. This is still... He's done worse than this, <laughs> but he's also done better. Yeah. But I think it's it's not really a benchmark in no, their careers, really, is it? It's something good that they can look back on and say, I was good in that, mm. and I've done worse than that. Adrian and Naomi, they both work really well together in this, and, you know, they do build a really kind of believable relationship, but... Yeah, there's some really good comedy moments between them yeah. as well. There's some like really good laugh, like laugh moments, and yeah. there's some actually makes you want to laugh, not just kind of you know chuckle yeah, like, to yourself. Yeah. yeah, and but again, it's not, it could could be better. But there's some good supporting 
Yeah, there are. I think turns. there's some really good casting choices in the supporting acts. You know, I'm a big fan of Jamie Bell and the stuff that he's done. So, I think I think he personally did a really good job in this film. Yeah, I think Jamie Bell is a really good actor. I I really want to see him do something like a lead, a yeah. lead in something Take else. Take a bigger Maybe... role in something. Yeah, he could I, handle that, I think. He could. I think he'd be really good in something. Cause, I mean, he's only 26, 27? Yeah, he's about that, I think. Yeah. yeah. And so I guess by the time he's 30, I think he should have done something yeah. really good. Something I'm... he can properly put his name to. Yeah, like something, like a good serious drama. I, fi- I think he could do it. I think mm. it just shows in this one how, like, how, well round, how well he can build a character in a yeah. really small, even in a good supporting role. I think he's one of the good ones mm. in... This Definitely. Andy Circus too. He's. I think he he did such a good role in this. Yeah, he's really good in this. It, I, I, he's such a good, like actor. I'd like to see him do more, lead stuff as well. Yeah, he he does do a lot of kind of supporting roles in films, and you know when he does take on that lead role, he plays it so well. Yeah, because he carry it. He's he because he can like blend comedy and drama really quickly. Yeah. as well. He's. He's got a, like a really good face mm. for both. Yeah. He's got like an elastic face. <laughs> and you can just pull the faces that you need to get across what he's trying to get across. Mm. And he's good at doing that. Yeah. He does have some pretty good facial expressions. Yeah. <laughs> but like none of them would have done as well as they've done without the script. Because the script, yeah. for a three hour script, the script is really good. There's a yeah. good blend of like character, comedy and action. Mm, they do manage to get everything in there and keep it going for the whole length of time because, you know, people could lose interest with it being so long, but you don't You don't with this film. Yeah, there's some three-hour films that you think, I won't watch that, I haven't got yeah, time. Not going to get but, through it. <laughs> yeah, but like this one you think, I'll make time to watch it. Yeah. It's not like one that you think, I'll just wait till I got the time. It's because it's good. It is such a good... Yeah. It's a good film. It's it's good. It's well directed. Good script. Good acting. Good visual effects. Ticks yeah. all the boxes. There is there is only one downside I would make with the script, and especially with some of the secondary characters, especially with with Jamie Bell's character of Jimmy. There is there's kind of there's no closure for them at the end. After you get back from Skull Rock, they they just disappear. You don't hear anything about him yeah completely agree that's that is the flaw of the script is that they build up too much character then yeah. you get to the the near the end and then it kind of just focuses on the main ones mm. it's like they're forgotten about yeah then, then the sporting ones get like forgotten about and you sort of wish that the film was a bit longer to fit them all yeah. in even but... if there was just just that little bit more about them it would have given it you know it would have helped a lot. Yeah, it would have given it the closure that I think it needs. Yeah. See, they, they spent so much time building up the backstories and, you know, even the tiny little details about him reading the book. and. Yeah, because there's some really good, like, each of the supporting characters got really good little details mm. and they got, like, good lines and you, you care about them all. It just doesn't yeah. finish them off, though. They just seem a bit kind of wasted in some ways. Yeah. They're sort of like, you could have made this shorter if you'd kind of left, not... You should have even not bothered so much with them yeah. or given them more. Yeah. It yeah. kind of seems that he's kind of left it halfway. I would have to give this film four stars, I think. Yep, agree. Four stars. In the hands of lesser directors, lesser actors, three stars, even two stars. Yeah, it wouldn't have got anywhere near. No. If it, the visual effects really bump it up as well. Yes, definitely they do. But it's too long. Yeah. I would have to agree. And to get a five star film, you've really got to tick like all the boxes. Mm. If he'd cut out a lot of the dinosaurs, yeah, added in more character, yeah, then that could have that could have mm. really made it a lot better. Mm. But it hasn't. So. Yeah, I think I think also as well if you know I think the build up to the main bit with with Kong itself even was a bit kind of slow. I think if maybe they'd boosted that up and got through that a bit faster, then I could have given it higher. But it's going yeah, to it's, it's it's it is really good, and you can see the love that Peter Jackson's put yeah. into it and the care that's gone into making it. But it just doesn't quite leap far enough ahead. Yeah, it's just a little bit flat. You feel a bit deep. You, it's a really good film. When you come out of it at the first after watching it you think that was so good then yeah. when you watch it again you could, that's when you realize 
oh, what happened to his character at mm. the end? And then you're like, oh, nothing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you kind of you're impacted with with the amazingness of the visual effects, uh, but you, yeah, you can maybe miss out on the bits that could have bumped it up. Yeah. But. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed that. And next time we're going to be reviewing Blue Velvet. Yeah, David Lynch's 1986 mystery thriller starring the villainous Dennis Hopper and he's terrifying in it. Yeah, it's definitely one to look forward to. See you next time. Bye.